Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, it's really, really incredible stuff. So one last thing, I, I've, I've heard, I don't know recently that you said, man, a great dissertation topic would be on how to identify a miracle. I don't know if, did you, did you say that or did I hear that from someone else? I, no, I've said that a lot over the years. I, yeah, yeah, because it's a, well, if, if you want to, as we draw down here, to comment on the, you know, we're fighting, it almost feels like a tidal wave of anti-supernaturalism. It's making headway back in, in small pockets, you know, quantum, this sort of thing with making some space there uh, to get away from the mechanistic sort of naturalism or scientism of the day. Uh, how, do you have any commentary about, you know, how you go about uh, talking about the supernatural? Like I said, it's the, uh, when I meet people just skeptic on the street or somebody up at the university, they usually just say, I can just toss it out. It's got miracles in it. You know, and, and they'd say, well, and then they kind of go that, they kind of take a, you kind of get the idea they're taking a Humean tact where if I open the floodgate, all of a sudden I got to believe Aesop's fables, you know? I, yeah, I, they probably don't want to open the floodgates. Well, For I'll sure. Tell you this. Uh, in order to get to another world, I think there are several tacts. Some people are really good in arguments for God's existence, the Kalam argument or right. other arguments. Yes. Some people are really good on the whole data of intelligent design and right. the fact that there's no chance, as a, as a leading cosmologist said just recently, there is no chance on the number of planets we know in this universe, the odds are so high, biological odds, that you could get life from non-life. Yes. It's not going to happen anywhere in the universe. Right. So intelligent design and fine-tuning arguments are big. Right. Yeah. I myself... To show there's another world, I take the I like to go after intelligent. I, I, I like to talk about near death experiences. Yes, because interestingly enough, near death experiences you get another world right immediately in the testimony. Here, here's an example. One of my best PhD students right now is an Indian student from India. He's got a master's degree from an Indian university. He spent four years at uh, Dallas Seminary doing 27 hours in Greek and Hebrew. The guy's really sharp. Wow. When he was 14 years old in India, he was up in a tree and he fell out of the tree on his head. He mm. was way up. He was like 15 feet up wow. and fell out of the tree on his head. His mom came running out of the house, picked up his seemingly lifeless body and she's screaming, Honey, don't die, don't die. Someone call an ambulance. His name, his name is Raj. What's his nickname? Raj. She's going, Raj, don't die on me, don't die on me. And he said, I was still up in the tree. My body's down there, but I was out of my body. And I'm saying to my mom, Mom, I'm fine. I'm fine. Will you stop crying? Wow. But he said, My mom did not hear me. She didn't know I was up in the tree. Wow. She thought she was holding me in her arms. Wow. And she was screaming at me, don't die. And he's going, wow. Mom, I'm more alive than I've ever been arguing. Now, what I'm saying is, in the majority of these near-death experiences, they are immediately in another world. Right. If you talk Kalam, if yes. you talk intelligent design, if you talk fine-tuning, yes. and, and I'd say time out here, Hugh Ross, the, the you know major yeah. uh, cosmologist, told me a few years ago now he reads everything yeah voluminously he told Absolutely. me he had not read an astrophysicist in the previous three years who did not has not either become a deist or concedes the possibility of deism yeah. he hasn't read one and so i named the name yeah. of a guy we both knew as maybe the biggest name guy who can't stand religion i said what about him and Hugh said he just conceded the possibility of deism. Unbelievable. So if you're going to get a deism kind of thing from cosmology, from fine tuning, from right. intelligent design, from the Kalam argument, mm -hmm. I think it's a great argument, but you right. have to say God did it. So you, you got to make that inference. Yes. I'm saying with near death experiences, the real, the really well evidential ones. And by the way, there's over 300 documented cases now, wow. but on the really good NDEs, you don't have to work to another world. You're in another world. Absolutely. This Raj yes. is up in the tree yelling at his mom, and you're going, no, no, no. Raj thought he was in the tree. Okay, yeah. what if I could tell you four things Raj did that proved he was up in the tree? What if I could tell you that? And you go, I don't believe that. I, I don't care. What if I can show you things that happen either in the room 
yes. or sometimes miles away that right. they see, they yes. see from the hospital room, yep. um, that they can, they can see these things. What if I told you they're in another world, but whenever they talk to somebody, stop beating on my chest. Wow. Stop it. I want to stay where I am. Right. Nobody looks up and says, Hey, stupid, I'm trying to save you. No, they don't hear you. They don't hear you yelling at them. Right. Um, and so they are, if these are evidence cases, they're not just somewhere else. And by the way, dozens of them have no measurable heart or brain activity or their general surgery cases, which you cannot hear people right. talk about general surgery. So there are dozens of those now with evidence, dozens with evidence. Wow. And the point is, when you say, I was telling you to quit hitting me, we couldn't hear you. Well, if you have evidence that you were there, what does there mean? Yes. There is already another world. Right. So if you have this claim that this man named Jesus was raised from the dead, and dead men don't rise, Right. and whenever Jesus was asked, what sign are you going to give us? Like in the Q passage yes. in uh, Matthew and Luke, Matthew 12, again, Matthew 16, give us a sign. And he said, you're a wicked and adulterous generation because you won't believe no matter what, but I'll still give you the sign of my resurrection. Right. Okay. So even there, it's the resurrection, but Jesus can't raise himself. I don't care how great he is. Mm. Uh, if you're dead, you're dead. Right. Uh, he said, my father is going to do it. Right. Well, wait a minute. If his father acts on him to raise him. Okay. Bingo. His dad's in another universe. His father's in another universe. Right. Secondly, right. if he made the most unique claims in the history of religions, two of them are, um, he claimed to be the son of God. Right. And he said that what you do with him are the keys to eternity. Well, even Boltman paraphrased, uh, Jesus taught that what you do with him determines where you spend eternity. Right. That's a paraphrase. But even right. the critics claim that. If yes. you claim those two things, how much more blasphemy can you be than to say, I'm the son of God and I hold <laughs> the keys to the kingdom? If God raised you from the dead, uh-oh. Yeah. Now I got to take that really seriously. Yeah. So for all these reasons, Joe, we're into another world from either right. God's existence, ID, yeah. right. intelligent design, yeah. fine tuning. Yeah. I'd like near death experiences the best because that tells me there's another world involved. And if there's an evidence, yes. evidence yeah. is over 300 cases. Right. There's an afterlife, no matter what you're going to do. Absolutely. Now let's talk about Jesus. Cause that's afterlife. Yes. There you go. I think these all dove together and yes, and, uh, let me close with this one liner. Yes. A friend of mine is writing a book for InterVarsity Academic. It's a major prep publisher. And John Hicks' little book on the existence of God has gone out of print, I understand. And it was a it was a you know a major source for decades. Gotcha. Well, now they decided to hire my friend and he did a book on recent arguments for God's existence. It's due out in a few months. Wow. One of the things he discovered is that naturalism is dying. Mm. Naturalism is going out the window. Right. And, and they can scream all they want. I hate intelligent design. It's not scientific. Right. I hate fine tuning. This I don't like the Kalam argument. Yes. Don't talk to me about uh, near death experiences. Everybody made it up. Right. You can say whatever you want, but if it's not affecting them, why are they converting? Not necessarily Christianity, but their belief in God. They are. These evidences are changing things. They are. I, I suspect you're a lot like me. I'm a sucker for a conversion story. I'm working on a video now uh, about these people converting following flu uh, that, that, that are converting. Not that there's anything wrong with converting based on a felt need or, you know, and addressing the, the suffering in your life, but based on the evidence. Uh, the flu is very clear. <laughs> this is why he converted. And they're usually in the hard sciences. These aren't Johnny come they're, they're not superstitious, gullible people uh, that, that they've been given award after award for being really, really disciplined thinkers. So yeah, yeah. And you're doing that now, huh? I am. I'm trying, I'm working on it. We're, we're going <laughs> to, if everything's in the works, you know how it goes. Well, I can tell you just from dealing with doubt and having I probably had a thousand conversations, emails, phone calls with doubters. Now we're going back. Right. We're going back 35 years, but I, I've had many, many, many th uh, hundreds and hundreds of calls. And I'm starting now to get calls from atheists and agnostics. Wow. I've got one, I got wow. one right on my computer right before you called me. A guy I've been dealing with for a while, but he just wrote back to me. Not a Christian. Sure, he's not a Christian. But he knows something's going on. Absolutely, and he wants to avoid. He wants to avoid uh, 
judgment, which he doesn't even believe in. He just doesn't want to take a chance on it being true. Uh, <laughs> so There's the people, wager back, right? <laughs> hey, the well, wager. Yeah. And, Come on. And you know what? I tell people we're all doubters for this reason. For sure. A, we're humans. We don't know everything. Absolutely. B, if the biblical story is true, we're sinners. Right. So sin and finiteness are bad grounds for th the, for thinking we know everything. Absolutely. And that means that non-Christians and, and, and atheists and agnostics are going to have questions. Of course. Just like, just like Christians do. So Absolutely. You're exactly right.